You know guys, these days, people throw the word genius around quite frequently. Sometimes, you know, when uh, yeah, I or some other uh, Minecraft technical guys show off some new stuff, people say, oh my god, he's a genius. So that uh, this morning inspired me to think about what um, does a genius mean to me? What is a genius? And then I watched a video of Freddie Mercury performing Bohemian Rhapsody live. And uh, going through the different phases of the song, you know, I had goosebumps and um, was traveling through all kinds of emotions. And then I realized a true genius is a person that is able to inspire others and touch their emotions. Anything else, sure, you know, if there's a, a gifted genius, is a math genius, that sure helps society as well. It doesn't make other geniuses or, you know, gifted people less valuable, of course. But to me, you know, being a true genius is actually if you're an em emphatic monster. That means you can read and touch emotions of people. That's, that makes you really, really smart. So does a cow trigger like that touch your emotions? Ask yourself that. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Surely it makes me happy. So yeah, that this works now makes me really happy. And I've been um, down here just making sure, you know, slabbing up the area here a little bit um, below the cows here. So yeah, I, I dug one block lower so we don't interfere and uh, make sure we don't get like a uh, guest spawning here and yeah i think the switch now is a working thing now what we need to do is um, we need to grab the power here and uh, bring that up um, all the way to where we can see um, the slabs and a bit beyond and yeah we want to have some some way of, of bringing a permanent red redstone signal up there and at the moment i'm thinking i will just use a piston pillar pushing upwards so yeah we can somehow or need somehow transfer the signal upwards and yeah i'm gonna do that and then today we can work on a super cool epic uh, door design that will be able to pop out two blocks like that on top of each other and open up the drop shoot we need here for yeah for the further further phases of this very complex project but yeah i'm having a lot of fun with it already because, yeah, I really feel like this uh, year around here on the Hermitcraft server, I really kind of found a bit of a new style to play in, which uh, to me is really enjoyable. Um, I was always hell-bent making super efficient farms in these things, but um, lately I've been doing a lot of these quirky, smaller, cool redstone-related things, and that is sure a lot of fun to me. So, yeah, let me start working here a little bit. I think we need some some support structures and then um, we'll try to kind of funnel funnel a signal up and then we later need to adjust the length of our signal here as well a little bit so yeah let me set up another temporary building station here and i see you when we're up there with the signal and then we can think about the door a bit which will be a highly complicated build but i'm looking forward to it all right, we have a way to transmit our signal up here. I just used a slime block stack, you know, and some redstone blocks pistons. I think that is the most compact way to do it here. And you, as you can see, we have nice frequent triggers. And now comes quite um, the challenge redstone wise. So um, look, we will need a too high. Let's see if you can somehow sneak that in here. Pretty much, yeah, you see, there's a too high gap here. So we need to have a door that from below in a hidden manner removes two blocks stacked on top of each other like that and um, yeah, also clear the pass here, right? When these blocks cannot just be really moved down or something, they need to be out of the way so there's a real tunnel to drop through. And yeah, I would say we need to clear a bit more space here and then we can lay out the basic piston idea for it and then um, yeah, we work from there. So let me see now. I need to be out. Okay, yeah, you can see the slime block stack coming up real quick. If you were quick, you could see it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, right here, right. Let's 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 get in here a little bit and remove some. We need we need some space. But technically, what we want to do is these two blocks, right? This is the center. Yeah. So this block stack we need to remove. That's it. 
to be able to do that, the lowest we can go with our piston stack to be able to do that is come in from here. So right here, let me get some, some pistons so we get a basic idea. Right there, our machine would pretty much start. And then we have a stack of four pistons here and if one more piston pulling from this side and this should be enough to actually pull this off. I had help with this project, Space Walker was in on it. He's one of the best door makers in the Minecraft community. Really, really good because this was um, really hard to do and even Methods and I uh, definitely struggled with it. And yeah, then we definitely need puller pistons here too. So um, about, let me think, here Yep, we would have two pistons on top of each other that would pull. And now we somehow need to tell these pistons to do the right thing. What they need to do is pretty much, right, go up. Uh, maybe we can see it better from on top. Uh, oh, missed the glass edge again. Good job. All right. So what needs to happen is uh, this piston there, the top piston needs to come up grab this thing, then it's be pulled out of the way, then um, we need to push stuff over, this under piston needs to be pulled up and um, yeah, do another pulls and to grab the top piston with a double extension, but first we need the single extension. So that makes it really tricky and yeah, I'm gonna wire things together now and do some tests and see if we can get this to work. The basic idea is there, we should be able to pull it off and if we have that done, we are one step closer to um, yeah, what we wanted here, a completely hidden, uh, super smooth system. Um, we might be able to, yeah, uh, what we will have in difference to um, the rest here for sure, we will have a solid carpet block. Um, I might even switch it out to a bit of a different block because somehow we people need to be able to locate the exact center here. I mean, they have an orientation from the blood moon, right? But yeah, uh, maybe if there's a minor difference, um, being a wool block here is actually a good thing. So yeah, anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and wire and um, let's see how it goes. Hopefully everything runs smoothly and uh, we can get it to work. It's a really tricky setup. All right, a bit of hardcore redstoning later. We have a very compact contraption here that hopefully does what it's supposed to do. I'm taking a risk here. This is the first test of the thing on camera. If it fails, I will have an awkward moment now. So keep your fingers crossed that these two blocks vanish. Ooh, okay, <laughs> halfway there. All right, so yeah, as you can see, this opened up a drop chute, right, to lower levels and will of course not drop all the way down to the cows in between. So there's all kinds of stuff going on here. This will be a super nice complex redstone thing. Okay, phase one completed, phase two. And we are closed again. Beautiful. So to kind of mark out the middle a little bit, we will have like full wool blocks uh, sitting on these four corners, All right? So that is, and this guy here will be glass. This middle block should also be blue wool. Um, I need to make one more blue wool. Let's do this real quick and the rest, let's see, I have a bunch of carpet while we're down here. So yeah, we can all, we can slap all this, yep. And here we can have also no problem. Could even have pumpkins here. Let's use them while we have them here to make sure it's nice and bright. And all the way around here is also no problem. And in between here should also be fine. Okay, let's quickly check our lever was here. Just a quick pull. Yeah, that looks looks good. Let's put the two blocks on there. Hopefully we didn't break it by triggering it empty, but it should be robust. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we broke it. <laughs> yeah, triggering it empty was a bad idea. Yeah, yeah that broke it. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, this needs to be shifted over again. 
Okay, I just uh, I need to make sure, yeah, this guy is not supposed to be here. Okay, yeah, tricking with empty is a bad idea. But we should be able to hide this um, quite perfectly. Let me play around with it a little bit, but I think we have no issue here. It should look flawless. So amidst the chaos here, um, one of the test worlds of the Psycraft crew, you know, here is the final design for the yeah double high trapdoor uh, thingy bingy. In case you have two wide floors, it could be really useful. And it's hard to show you that in survival, so I thought let's quickly come to the test world here and show you. So yeah, these are our two blocks, right? That's the front of the design. Um, you have the observer facing your way. And then the four sticky pistons, all pistons you see are sticky pistons. And if we flick this lever, yeah, we get the retraction. The two blocks get pushed here and there. And extension just goes like that. And um, yeah, let's quickly look at some of the components in detail so you can replicate it. So uh, from the front, the design looks like that. Here on the side, you need to trigger these pistons in a certain order. So you have an observer facing into that, right? The face is here. The face of this observer is on top and the comparator sits there. So both observers read out of this one, out of this comparator. Bring it down to this block, bring it down to over here. And that enables us to power all these pistons because yeah, this, um, one on top gets a signal, it gets a pulse and gets has quasi-connectivity from on top, right? You can see that here this piston gets powered, it updates this one as well when it moves. And yeah, for the downward part we hit this redstone dot, which gets this one and this one. So this is a nice way to wire um, a four high piston wall like that. And yeah, we control the length of the timing here with four items in these hoppers facing each other. Right, and you have a torch sitting right there, and the design relays on a permanent in or output of power, and the closed state is when the lever is down, powered, right? So now the setup is closed. Around here you read out again, um, as soon as the items arrive over here, we send a pulse around the corner here, that makes sure we pulse this a second time in the right moment just with one tick delay and the torch delay here. But we also bring the signal down. You know, if this observer gets updated, it puts the signal into here. And we hit this hopper dropper combo. Here's a dropper, here's a hopper. One item, as soon as this gets a pulse, item gets shut up once, we send a quick pulse into this um, piston here. And this is one of the double pulses we also need. And yeah, in the middle here, to control the piston that uh, retracts things. We just read out um, with a bit of delay. First pulse here, then another pulse. And we get this by these two observers facing upwards, right? Their outputs are here, faces are down. And we look at this observer and we look at this hopper. And this way we get the sequence and um, yeah, all of that in a really, really compact footprint. And that is thanks to Spacewalker because yeah, Yes, he's a genius because this inspires me and makes me happy. All right, so here's the input of the door and I have a torch below it now so we can remove this lever. And now comes the big moment where you actually want to hook up um, yeah, everything together. That means as soon as this piston here relaxes, we want to put these blocks in and then we want to teleport out of here somehow and observe the magic of this door opening and closing yes okay so let's test it player would stand here we have a bit of a cooldown downstairs now so he would remain here okay cooldown is still running we might have to tweak the timings a little bit but by standing here, we should be able to trigger the, the cows. Come on. Please. Did something break? I think the piston retracted just now. I could hear it. So from now on out, the door should be sensitive again. I heard some pistons going off. Something went wrong. Oh. Oh yeah, okay. 
Whoop. Yeah, we had we need an immovable block there. I just realized what we did is we broke our connection there, right? When this uh, thing comes up, it moves this block about. So we need something that cannot be moved, and then it should be fixed. All right. Yeah, but it's looking good, guys. Where was my way out? Was it here? Yeah. Okay. All is a bit cramped in down here, I confess, but that's just how it goes. Let's get an obsidian block in the mix and that should fix our issue there. We have the repeater we had there still. Yep. So pretty much this needs to oops, needs to go. Let's get back. I can, it's really cramped in here and tricky to navigate, but yeah, we're getting there. This is all prototyping. So that means we want to have the obsidian block right there. And then um, our trigger right here. Let's give it a bit of delay to make sure we don't get no weird short pulses or anything. And now this sh the thing should be fully functioning. Yeah, it just triggered. Okay. Closing again, nice. Now we have the cooldown. Yep, okay. Woo! Nice! It works, guys. Unreal. Can't believe it. That was really tricky to do. So obviously, um, we don't want to fall down all the way um, to here, right? Yep, now the door is open again. And now it's closed again. It's not a problem, the door can handle these, the speed. And yeah, this is um, pretty much um, where we come out. And I was uh, thinking maybe already around here, right? This is uh, pretty much our landing zone. So we fall down through the hole and land here. This is our in-between floor. And here, yeah, we have to figure out a smart direction, maybe diagonal or whatever, where we hammer out a piston bolt going this way. We should have enough space here below the hub, right? I mean, there is head, head room, uh, enough clearance. And yeah, we should be able to get out here. So let's wait for the thing to trigger one more time and then we teleport through here. Then we can cover everything on top. Whoop. So, and now of course this thing will not, uh, as I said, constantly trigger, right? This would be annoying. Like if I'm over here, this thing will not go off. Let's fill everything in so we can observe properly. So, okay, yeah, this is at the moment what ha what's happening, dear. Yeah, no problem. Okay, this can be knocked out and place that back. Some glass, I had some glass laying about here, let me see. Hmm. Do we have some more glass that fits with here? Is it black stained or gray? What is it? I think it's gray, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So the falling bit is done. Now let's go over here and see if it triggers. Let's say if we... Yep. Okay, we were just a little bit too close, but... Let's wait for one more cycle. So if we stay roughly here... Yeah, roughly, yeah, it should not trigger. Hopefully. Okay. Mm -hmm. How interesting it can be to see nothing happening, right? Great. Very good. Yeah, this confirms it. Now we get closer. And wait for a little bit and we should be in range again and the thing should go off. Perfect. Perfect. Bro, I'm really proud about this one. Once again, of course, a lot of the people in the Minecraft community helped, but this is as slick as as hail. <laughs> really nice. And yeah, only will trigger if somebody lingers around here. Now, if you stay out of range again, we're cool. The, sh the thing is shut off. Boom, auto resets, clean, you know, and it doesn't, it's it's not invasive with our, with our looks here, right? We just have this tiny little cross here, pretty much symbolizing the exact middle. And then we will be able to get down there. 
this is cool. This is some cool redstone stuff. So yeah, big shout outs to Spacewalker once again. You know, the guy who helped me with the Hermitcraft door. And <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, with methods, I was derping around for hours to figure out the perfect setup for the cows. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this. And yeah, now we can start throwing in a railway and um, yeah, I'm looking at it now. I mean, you know, obviously our cross here is orientated in the cardinal directions. So this is southbound, I think. Where are we looking at here? Facing west, south. Yeah, this was the southbound. So we have the tunnel. That's the one tunnel we have facing southbound. So as we go in the cardinal directions with our tunnels up there, we probably should go diagonal see how nice and quick it triggers when you walk up here ah, so beautiful so we should probably go diagonal right towards one one corner here and then up 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 it's a long way up You're gonna probably hook up a nice minecart piston elevator thingy bingy there and then yeah somehow we need to have a station up there where people pop out and we don't want to break the symmetry don't want to break the symmetry of things so we got to be really smart where we could have an outcome up there let's quickly rush uh, go up there so the thing is look guys um i think yeah here's the southbound tunnel right here's our cross so we want to come out somewhere and um yeah if you just come out in a corner we have a station there it would be would be intrusive so if we do that we have to coordinate with the other guys that are more involved with the design process up here how things look a bit that i think tango did that or impulse and x was also involved with this so let's see what ideas they have i need to consult and see where is the best spot for the for the yeah kind of elevator to come out right i mean just gonna blast through to one of the corners it almost looks like also you know piston bolt wise if we go diagonal over there you know this is also the shortest distance to travel right if you follow the cardinal directions we have the long side of the uh, triangle here this would be a square root shorter so we definitely would want to go diagonal i guess and then we would come out here somewhere in the corner and i'm pretty sure i can manage i need a little bit of space we got to do it now before people uh, lay out a lot of tunnels but i'm pretty sure if we figure out the exact corner of um, here somewhere we could hide it and you literally I don't know arrive here and then get ejected and end up in front of the wall right here in the corner something like that um, but yeah the downwards um, let me know what you think what's the best way to approach this um, but in my opinion the diagonal right so diagonal piston bolt it is there's definitely other thing and yeah pretty happy with all of this and um, I would say let's do one more drop experiment so we came in from on top boom triggers right away you know and then you end up down here and from here piston bolt epicness we make it really nice down here probably use some more or better decorative blocks than the ones been using now you know and make it a little, little bit cozy down here and now i'm trapped fly fly no oh <laughs> Okay, I have to dig, to, uh, dig myself out. I have no enderpearls. Anyways, guys, um, that was a bit more of a super technical episode. Very old school, you know. We didn't do much uh, shenanigans or anything. Hardcore to the point. But I think, you know, that has always been the core of the Hermitcraft. And we also always want to keep that tradition up. And make sure we show real good, sh good stuff, right? So, yeah. See you next time. My friends, don't miss um, the live stream. We're going to do one on Tuesday. We had a lot of fun again the last one i did and i'm really getting a neck yeah kind of getting into the groove when it comes to the live streaming enjoying myself there and yeah so just checking it out and it's always a lot of fun anyways guys i see you in the next episode and um i just broke that one glass i shouldn't have broken yeah it's time to wrap it up <laughs> bye guys give me feedback ideas right See ya!